S E X. Sex. Say this word aloud in any public place and see how people pay attention to you with a shocked expression. Yeah, it's the word and the thing that mankind is still pretty touch wood with, but it's one of the most natural things ever. In the realm of modern television, few shows have managed to capture the multifaceted nature of adolescence as effectively as the British series Sex Education. Produced by Netflix, the show masterfully intertwines humor, drama, and poignant moments to paint a vivid picture of the challenges, revelations, and rites of passage associated with teenage life. Central to the series is the character of Otis Milburn. While at first glance he might seem like your quintessential awkward teenager, Otis's life is far from ordinary. As all the seasons of sex education are over now, in today's video we will take a closer look at the character of Otis Milburn through an analytical eye. Otis's mother, Dr. Jean Milburn, is a professional sex therapist. Growing up under her influence, Otis has inadvertently amassed a wealth of knowledge about human sexuality, knowledge most teenagers wouldn't possess. This combined with his natural proclivity for empathy paves the way for an unexpected venture, an underground sex therapy clinic for his high school peers. The genesis of this clinic is as much a surprise to Otis as it is to the audience. While financial incentives initially motivate the endeavor, as the series unfolds, it is evident that the heart of Otis's practice lies in a genuine desire to help his peers navigate the turbulent waters of teenage relationships and self-discovery. The duality of his role, being both a therapist and teenager, grappling with his own issues provides a rich narrative filled with comedic misadventures, heartbreak, and profound introspection. Otis is a nerdy, intelligent, and well-behaved teenager. He is a kind, shy, worried, and socially uncomfortable person who stands up for everyone he cares about and everything he believes in, as seen by the fact that he goes above and beyond in his efforts to help others. Otis isn't judgmental at all, in contrast to most people who frequently judge others for making derogatory remarks about them behind their backs, he is constantly concerned for those in need. Otis was forever scarred after he saw his father engaging in sexual activity with one of his clients. Otis was bewildered and terrified since he didn't comprehend what was happening. When Otis questioned his mother about the incident, she confessed that Remy had cheated on her and in an effort to comfort him, explained what sex involved and added that it could both make people happy and ruin their lives. This eventually caused Otis to develop a form of PTSD that temporarily hampered his sexual development. Otis is regarded to be highly insightful and listens out for everyone without passing judgment, constantly seeking to make people feel comfortable, arguably Otis's finest quality. Otis is the son of one of the most well-known sex therapists. Otis is a fantastic sex or emotion therapist who constantly looks out for his patients. Having experienced a lot of pain and worry, he is able to get into the underlying causes of those emotions. Otis may be rather nasty at times because of his sensitive nature as seen by the time he called Eric an attention seeker in reaction to him admitting that he can never have Maeve because of his phobia of women. Despite this, Otis is a great friend who always looks out for those he cares about, as demonstrated by his numerous sincere attempts to apologize to Eric for his actions before he finally succeeds. He even decided to end things with Maeve at a point when he realized how their relationship was affecting his friend and his life in general. Otis is very concerned about his friends and goes above and beyond to assist them whenever feasible. This was seen when he stood up for Eric in front of Adam after finding that the former bully had tried to date his closest buddy. Despite having a caring and flamboyant personality, Otis can be quite sly at times. For example, in episode 4, he advises Jackson to make a grand gesture to ask Maeve out, knowing that she dislikes such displays of affection. But this backfires and Jackson and Maeve begin dating. He has also been known to steal his mother's therapy notebook to find out why Ola broke up with him, which causes a crisis at the school. Otis Milburn is not just the central figure of sex education, he is the window through which the series conveys its deepest messages about adolescence, growth, and misunderstanding. The show covers various aspects of sexuality and relationships while also delving into personal growth, friendships, and the awkwardness of adolescence. First, let's take an in-depth look at his main interpersonal relationships throughout the series. In the case of the mother-son relationship, we see Gene Milburn is a sex therapist, which has led to Otis feeling uncomfortable about his own sexual growth and understanding. Initially, there's tension due to the boundaries Gene often crosses concerning Otis's privacy. 
You cross multitudes of parental boundaries on a daily basis. In this scene, this clearly shows Otis's struggle for autonomy and privacy, especially given Jean's profession and her tendency to be overly involved in his personal life. However, as the series progresses, they both attempt to understand and respect each other's boundaries, leading to a more balanced mother-son relationship. If we look at Otis and Maeve's relationship, it begins as a business partnership where they establish a clinic to provide sex advice to their schoolmates. As the series progresses, their relationship deepens with underlying romantic feelings. Their relationship is a roller coaster of emotions. In a scene, the culmination of the season's worth of building tension is evident when Otis musters the courage to express his feelings for Maeve at the school dance. There was this moment last time where I thought maybe you liked me, and I liked you back. Staying to partnership, then friendship, and eventually romantic interests, the dynamic between Otis and Maeve is the central crux of the show. Let's move on to his chemistry with Eric, Otis's best friend. They have a deep understanding of each other and provide a pillar of support in their respective lives. Though the bond remains strong, they face challenges, especially as Otis starts to get involved with the clinic and Maeve. In Season 2, the joint birthday party Otis and Eric traditionally celebrate takes a tumultuous turn. Otis becomes too engrossed with his relationship issues, particularly concerning Maeve, causing him to neglect Eric. When Otis misses the time they were supposed to meet, Eric confronts him, leading to a heated argument that sheds light on the strains in their friendship. There's parts of my life that you don't really understand. Like what? These are the moments of jealousy and misunderstanding in the final season too, but their friendship always finds a way to endure. Otis's first girlfriend, Ola, is also important here in the series. Ola is the daughter of Jakob, who is the stepfather of Otis. Their relationship, though genuine, often finds itself in the shadow of Otis's unresolved feelings for Maeve. After a series of awkward moments and Otis's clear emotional conflict concerning Maeve, they have an honest conversation in Otis's clinic shed. It shouldn't be difficult, Otis. We're 16. Are you breaking up with me? Yeah. This candid revelation underscores the primary challenge in their relationship. It eventually concludes with mutual respect and understanding. Speaking of Niemans, Jakob, Ola's father, and for a while was Jean's romantic partner. Otis's relationship with him is an extension of his relationship with Ola and his mother. Initially, there is unease due to the dual dynamics at play. That is, Jean and Jakob and Otis and Ola. Otis's discomfort with Jakob's growing presence in his life, particularly as a romantic partner for Jean, is evident during the dinner scenes. One particular dinner in Season 2 where Otis tries to assert dominance over Jakob, mainly to protect Jean, is both comedic and revealing of Otis's struggles with accepting changes in his domestic life. However, as the series progresses, Otis grows to understand and accept Jakob. Another pivotal character of the series, Adam Groff, who bullies Eric, and it causes tension between him and Otis. As the series progresses, Adam's relationship with Eric changes, leading to a shift in dynamics with Adam's evolving relationship with Eric and deeper insights into Adam's personal struggles. Otis's perception of him also changes. Ruby is one of the untouchables in school, typically dismissive of Otis. However, in later seasons, their dynamic takes unexpected turns, leading to deeper interactions. The two share moments that challenge their initial perceptions of each other. This results in growth for both characters and adds layers to their relationship. In Season 3, after a party, Otis wakes up to find Ruby in his bed. The initial shock turns into a series of secret trysts. One poignant scene involves them lying in bed together, talking about their personal lives. The interactions reflect universal themes of self-acceptance, understanding, and the continuous journey of self-discovery, and also reflect how Otis is as a human being. One of Otis's standout qualities is his deeply ingrained empathy. This doesn't merely stem from his acquired knowledge of human sexuality, but from a genuine desire to understand and alleviate the emotional distress of those around him. For example, in Season 1, Episode 6, Otis is asked by his friend Maeve to help one of their classmates, Lily, who is struggling with her sexual self-esteem and anxiety. Otis agrees to assist Lily and creates a safe and non-judgmental space for her to discuss her concerns. Through empathetic listening and gentle guidance, Otis helps Lily gain confidence in her sexuality. He not only shares his knowledge, but also provides emotional support, making her feel understood and accepted. Despite being an informal therapist, Otis often finds himself ensnared in the quintessential adolescent web of awkwardness. 
His own journey of sexual discovery is a testament to this, where he grapples with the anxieties of his own sexual experiences. As you can see in this scene, Otis's journey is not without its hurdles, be it personal challenges like navigating complicated relationships, or external challenges like the school's administration, or societal judgments. Otis exhibits a commendable level of resilience. He consistently endeavors to understand himself better and to evolve as an individual, even in the face of adversity. In Season 2, Episode 3, Otis is dealing with a variety of personal challenges. He has complicated relationships with both his best friend Eric and his ex-girlfriend Ola. Otis is struggling to come to terms with his feelings for Maeve, with whom he has a complicated romantic history. Despite numerous challenges, Otis strives to improve himself, seeking guidance from his sex therapist mother, Jean, working on communication skills, mending his friendship with Eric, and addressing his insecurities and anxieties. Throughout Season 2, Otis's resilience is evident as he confronts his personal issues head-on, even when facing difficult and uncomfortable situations. Living with a single parent, particularly one as open about sexuality as Dr. Jean Milburn, has indelibly shaped Otis's worldview. While this has endowed him with vast knowledge, it also places him in situations of discomfort, especially when his personal life becomes a topic of discussion. This dynamic profoundly influences his approach to relationships, both romantic and platonic. In Season 1, Episode 4, there's a scene where Otis is at Maeve's house, and they are trying to discuss their own romantic experiences. Otis is visibly hesitant and uncomfortable talking about his own sexual life, despite his expertise in sex therapy. He stumbles over his words and avoids eye contact, showcasing the complexity of his relationship with his mother, Jean, who is a sex therapist herself. Otis feels pressure to live up to his mother's expectations, which adds a layer of awkwardness to his interactions with Maeve. Otis Milburn's journey in sex education is not linear, but a tumultuous ride reflecting his internal and external transformations through the series. If you look closely, his evolution is deeply intertwined with his experiences, mistakes, and learnings, making him a relatable protagonist amidst the eclectic characters of Moordale High School. In Season 1, we encounter Otis as an awkward, reclusive teenager crippled by his own sexual anxieties. The birth of the underground sex therapy clinic with Maeve, initially a capitalist venture, unexpectedly propels him into the complex lives of his peers. A turning point in his heart-to-heart -heart with Adam during detention, where Otis transcends the initial awkwardness to help Adam navigate through his own emotional and sexual predicaments. In Season 2, the layers of Otis's character unfold as he grapples with the success and moral dilemmas of the therapy clinic and navigates through his relationships, notably with Ola and Maeve. Otis starts attending his mother's therapy sessions, which forces him to confront his own issues and the unresolved tension between them. His increasing involvement with the sex clinic amplifies his confidence, but it also strains his friendships and creates ethical dilemmas. During the season, Otis goes through a series of ups and downs in his friendships and romantic relationships. His growing self-awareness makes him more empathetic and attuned to the emotions of those around him. He begins to understand that the world is not simply divided into sexually experienced and inexperienced people, and that everyone faces their unique challenges. In Season 3, Otis experiences significant personal growth, becoming more mature in navigating relationships, and becoming a budding therapist. He becomes more open about his feelings, learns honesty, and deepens his ability to communicate and empathize, improving as a friend, partner, and therapist. His character arc sways through accepting his sexual desires, confronting the tensions in his friendship with Eric, and recognizing his true feelings for Maeve. His relationship with Ruby introduces Otis to a different dimension of teenage relationships, blurring the lines between emotional connections and physical relations. Simultaneously, the poignant moment of heartfelt confession to Maeve towards the end of the season showcases Otis's evolution in understanding and articulating his feelings. Otis has an inherent desire to help others. Otis's motivation, although initially marred by capitalistic tendencies, quickly shifts towards a genuine heartfelt desire to assist his peers. It's this very drive that transforms his role from a mere transactional therapist to someone his peers trust and confide in. Beyond the monetary transactions, Otis often goes out of his way to support his peers. In Season 1, Episode 6, there is a scene where Otis goes out of his way to support his friend Maeve. In this episode, Maeve is dealing with a difficult situation, involving her estranged brother and his addiction issues. Otis, knowing how important Maeve's education is to her, takes it upon himself to tutor her brother and help him get his life back on track. 
This act of support not only showcases Otis's caring nature, but also demonstrates his commitment to helping his friends, even when it's not easy. He has the influence of his mother, Dr. Jean Milburn's open approach to sexuality, and her professional prowess as a sex therapist have invariably shaped Otis's perspectives. While this often places him in awkward situations, it also endows him with a progressive, non-judgmental lens, especially when dealing with sexuality and relationships. Otis's nuanced handling of topics like masturbation, sexual orientation, or fetishes, even when he's personally uncomfortable, showcases the depth of understanding and acceptance he's gleaned from his mother. Otis embodies the philosophy that adolescence is not a straightforward journey, but a series of trials, errors, and epiphanies. He believes that mistakes, while painful, are instrumental in the growth process. If you remember this iconic scene, you can notice his most earnest insights about life. This scene and the dialogue made Otis most loved and relatable among the viewers. The great philosopher Socrates believed in the power of dialogue and questioning to arrive at personal truths. Otis's therapy sessions too often involve him asking probing questions and guiding individuals to find answers within themselves, rather than imposing solutions. When counseling Maeve about her relationship with her mother, Otis doesn't offer direct advice but prompts her to introspect and confront her feelings, mirroring Socrates' dialectical method. And not only Socrates, but also John Paul Sartre also posited that existence precedes essence, emphasizing the power of individual choice and responsibility. For example, also the assembly scene in Season 2, Episode 8, where Otis publicly acknowledges his mistakes and addresses the importance of mutual respect and understanding. The moment Otis acknowledges his mistakes at the assembly and takes responsibility for his actions is reminiscent of existential ideals about confronting one's choices. Otis also consistently upholds the philosophy that sexuality isn't isolated from emotions, but deeply interconnected with one's psyche, past experiences, and relationships. His therapy sessions often transcend the immediate sexual concerns, delving into underlying emotional or psychological issues. For instance, she helps Lily not just with her physical discomfort during intercourse, but understanding the anxiety stemming from the pressure of creating a perfect romantic moment. Moral stance is another perk of Otis. Philosopher Aristotle believed that virtues, moral character, and personal integrity were central to ethical behavior. Otis in his journey strives to cultivate virtues like honesty, empathy, and understanding, aligning with the Aristotelian notion of ethics. Otis's endeavors to mend his relationship with Eric after their fallout based on honesty and mutual respect echo Aristotle's emphasis on the significance of virtuous friendships. Speaking of his fallout with Eric in Season 4, Otis consistently reverted to his emotionally stunted, immature self. In the final season, Otis arrives at his new school, Cavendish, and accuses the existing teenage sex therapist Sarah O. Owen of stealing his idea without any evidence. He continued to challenge her for the position, displaying entitlement. Otis also uses Ruby throughout the season and shows a lack of compassion and disrespect towards his mother, Jean. However, his worst behavior was evident in his friendship with Eric. He has historically been a terrible friend to Eric, consistently dropping him from something more interesting. Eric, on the other hand, embraced healthier friendships at Cavendish, and the contrast between his relationships with his new friends and Otis was striking. His friends listened to him, valued his time, and showed up for him in ways Otis never did. Eric's journey in the final season was transformative, marked by hardship, courage, sacrifice, and fear. Despite the shabby treatment he received from Otis, Eric remained loyal. When he tried to address the issues in their friendship, Otis shut down the conversation. Ultimately, Eric decided to take some time apart from Otis, holding him accountable for his behavior. This was the first time the show revealed Otis's flawed nature for all to see and demonstrate the cost of his immaturity. Otis only started to work on their friendship when he had no one else. While Otis showed some effort to understand Eric's world better, his pattern of apologizing and then backpedaling remained consistent. It's unclear if his apologies will lead to real change, given his non-apology to Ruby in the finale. In the end, Otis is a flawed and messy character, but the show doesn't need to change him. It just needs to stop hiding his flaws. It took four seasons, but the show finally acknowledged that Otis is far from perfect. Otis is very much related to entitlement, egoism, immaturity, and a struggle for genuine self-improvement. Based on this analysis, we can derive certain philosophical inclinations and compare them to historical figures in the realm of philosophy. Egoism and Entitlement Otis's behavior seems to align with a sort of ethical egoism where an individual acts primarily in their self-interest. 
The philosopher most famously associated with this is Ayn Rand, although her version is more principled than advocates for rational self-interest. In Rand's philosophy, one's own interests are the primary motivating force, and altruism is seen as morally detrimental. Otis's entitlement and his tendency to prioritize his feelings and desires, especially in interactions with others, could be seen as aligning with this egoistic viewpoint, although arguably in a less sophisticated manner. Moral Relativism Otis's consistent backpedaling and inability to offer genuine apologies could suggest a form of moral relativism. Moral relativists like Friedrich Nietzsche argued that moral values are not objective but are constructed by individual cultures or societies. In the world of Otis, his moral compass may be swayed by his immediate circumstances, desires or pressures, rather than any fixed set of ethical principles. Existential Crisis and Authenticity the struggle for self-improvement and the unveiling of Otis's flaws might evoke themes from existentialist philosophers like Jean-Paul Sartre. They emphasize living authentically, confronting the absurdity of existence, and taking responsibility for one's actions. While Otis may not be exemplifying the ideal of living authentically, his struggles and the show's decision to unveil his flaws might be seen as a push towards a more authentic portrayal of his character. So what's your thought on Otis Milburn? How do you relate to his struggles and triumphs? Comment below. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching.